Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In today's video, I'll show you the breakdown of how I worked on this animation and the full process behind it. Here's the animation before I apply everything that we covered in this video, and here's the animation after. Time to level up your skills. Let's go! This short animation we're covering in this tutorial is a section of this full animation. You can download the full animation working file in our store in the description, together with some other exciting animation projects. First of all, let's create a cube like this. Let's go to Composition. Name this one Cube. Let's change the dimension to 1080 by 1080. Click OK. Now we just go to Layers, New, Solid. This could be the one side of my cube. And let me just duplicate this one a couple times. We're gonna have six sides of the cube. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the different sides of the cube. Let's turn them into 3D layer. Go to custom view one. Now we can change the position of these sides so that we can form a cube shape. Let's go hit P on the keyboard for position and then shift R on the keyboard for rotation. I'm going to flip this one to 90 degrees. So the second one, I'll go flip this one to 90 degrees as well. And then I need to push this one on the X position to 1080. And then push this second one on the X position to zero. So we have two sides. And next thing we need to do is hit P on the keyboard. Let's see which one is this. So this one, I can change this one to 540 on the Z position. So it's pushed to the side all the way to the back. And then for this one, we're gonna change the Z position to negative 540. It's gonna push on this side. So now I can see very clearly, so I need to change the color now. Let's go change the color so that it's easier to see. Doesn't matter what color it is. And then we're missing the top and bottom. So for the yellow and the purple, let's hit R on the keyboard. We need to rotate it on the X axis, right? X orientation, so change it to 90 degrees on both layers for 90 degrees. And then I need to push this purple one to the top. It should be in the X position or it should be in the Y position. Change this one to 1080 then change this one to zero. So it's pushed on the side. And now if I hit option, I can rotate it in the custom camera view. We can see that we have a cube here. That's looking pretty good. And that's how we create a cube. After we have this cube, we can do some animation. Let's go create another composition Call this one cube animation and change it to 1920 by 1080. Let's drop in my cube layer. First of all, I need to turn on this icon, Collapse Transformation, in order to access my 3D cube in my composition. And then let's change it to a 3D layer. Let's change it to the custom view. You can see in my composition, I have my cube here. Let's go back to the front view. Next thing, we just need to add some animation on the cube. So basically we, animated the scale property. So we have the cube coming in and using the null object to animate the position and the scale as well. So the cube would go up and then it would flip in the X rotation and Y rotation. After it land here, we're gonna have the cube slightly turning to the right. And this is gonna be our full animation. I might also need to make this composition larger. So let's hit the command K. Let's change it to 1920 by 1920. So we got some space to work with. This is my animation for the cube. Next thing we need to do is we need to create these gradient texture to apply to the different sides of my cube. Let's go inside our liquid gradient texture. If I turn off the blur layer, all I did was I created a bunch of circles. All these circles are having a wiggle position effects. It's set to one wiggle per second and then the amount is 200 pixels so that we have all these different circles that's wiggling around. If I play this, 
you can see these circles are just wiggling around in the space. After we have all of these circles wiggling in the space, we're going to apply a adjustment layer called this one blur and then add the fastbox blur, set it to 70% radius. If I turn this on, you can see it becomes blurry and this is going to be our gradient texture that we apply onto the cubes. After we have the gradient texture, let's go back to the cube animation. What we need to do is we need to apply to all the different sides of the cube with our liquid gradient texture. Let's drop in our liquid gradient texture here. Let's drop in our liquid gradient texture here. That's good. And now what we need to do is to apply this gradient texture on each side of the cube. Let's assume the green color is the front side of my cube. And then let's go to add a leaf color effect onto my cube composition. Let's sample this color to leave to be the screen color in the front and then change the decolor to 100%. Now you can see all my other sides are changed to grayscale. And now we need to go to linear keys, linear color key, and then we can sample this lighter gray color, change the tolerance maybe to 50%, just large enough so that we're keeping the green color. Now you can see we only keep this front side of my cube. We can apply the liquid gradient to my cube by using track mat. But first we need to turn the liquid gradient to a 3D layer. Now we just go to track mat and then select the cube to be the track mats. And this is how we apply the material to just one side. After we apply it, we can change the size of my material and maybe the position as well to get the desired gradient that we want for that side. After we do that, we just need to select the two layers and duplicate it, Command D and make sure in this case for the second duplication, we are selecting another side. So let's go to cancel the track mats and then let's turn on the cube, hide the gradient. And in this case, I need to turn off these effects and I'm going to sample a different side. Let's say this orange side, let's turn on this leaf color and in this case, after we change the sample to the orange color, we're only selecting this one side on the right, which is good. Let's go back to liquid gradient, go to track mat, select this cube layer three to be my track mat, and then turn on the liquid gradient. Now, this is gonna be a liquid gradient for my layers on the side. In this case, we need to keep duplicating to do the same thing for all the other side. And in the end, we'll get a cube that's been applied to the same material on all sides. After we apply the material, another thing we need to do is we need to go to the liquid gradient texture and we need to add some layer style to it. The first one we're going to add is inner glow. And in terms of inner glow, let's change it to a white color, change the blending mode to darken opacity to 75 and then let's change the size to about 100 and this is the setting we get for the inner glow it's basically going to add some glow around the edges and then another thing we're going to do is bevel and emboss this is what it looks like without the inner glow in the front side let's apply the inner glow it's going to give us some glow effect around the edges and then we can also apply the bevel and emboss for the bevel and emboss let's do a inner bevel 77 percent of depth size to be 15 and then angle you can change it to whatever you like change the highlight mode to screen and make sure the color is in white in the highlight area so this is what we get after we have the bevel and emboss it's going to give more dimension to our cube after we have this layer style we need to apply this layer style to all these duplications of my liquid gradient texture so that this style is going on to all the six sides of my cube let's see the animation after we've done the materials this is going to be my cube animation. That looks pretty good. After we have the cube, this is my cube. We're going to go outside, make sure we add some effects on the cube composition. The first one is going to be the curves effects. Let's drag here to make the highlights more prominent and then drag the curve down here. Next thing I'm going to add is a deep glow so that my cube is glowing. And then right now I'm thinking the color is a bit washed out. So I'm going to add a vibrance to dial it back to 100% of vibrance so that my cube is more colorful. This is going to be my cube animation. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We will publish new content every week. 
Click the subscribe button to level up your animation skills and get inspired with great animation every week. You can also join our community to hang out with fellow designers and grow together. Check out the link in the description. Next thing, let's go ahead and work on the pyramid. Let's go inside the pyramid composition. We are essentially doing the same thing to my cube, but instead of applying the same material to the six sides of my cube, I'm now in this case applying material to each section of this pyramid. Basically what we have at the beginning, if I hide my liquid gradient texture, and then let me show the shape layer of my cube you can actually see all these shape layers they're just created by using a mask and uh, this is going to be just one section of my pyramid. and then if i turn on this one we got a second section of my pyramid and then the third section the fourth one and the fifth one so these are the different section of the pyramids that we're using and now we just need to apply the same material to these different sections using the track mats that we showed the same way that we applied the material to my cubes so if i unsolo these and then let's turn on these liquid gradient that looks good another thing to note is instead of using the same liquid gradient if I go inside this one, this is the exact same gradient that we used to apply to the cube. We now have another set of gradient that I created. It's called gradient texture number two. And in this case, I'm using a different set of color. We're using a blue color, a blue gradient, and some purple color. And if I play the animation, this is what it looks like. It's the exact same thing that we did before by using these shape layers and adding a wiggle position property so that they're all wiggling inside this composition. And we're using a fast box blur effect to blur them out so that if I go outside, you can see the middle three shapes, I'm using this texture too with green and purple color. And the outside, I'm using a original texture, which is the yellow and the pink gradient that we have and in order to get the best look we can also change the size and rotation of my gradient color so in terms of this one you can actually rotate it to get the best effect you want if you like this portion of my gradient color you can do it or i can even shrink the size to reposition it so that i get the best looking gradient color for my middle section of the pyramid and that's essentially what we did for the pyramid and other than the intersection we also added a couple strokes so essentially we're just drawing one line along the edge of each section and then we're applying a gradient color along that line so that we have this kind of shape that's formed by our lines it's just gonna add some dimension to my pyramid so that when i turn everything on you can see there's some glowing lines just in between these shapes which helps to add more definition and another thing to note is that remember we added some layer style to my gradient texture in the cube to make sure we get some highlights around the edges so this is what we did we also added some inner glow to make sure it's brightened out and then we added some bevel and emboss. We're using the same setting for the inner glow and the bevel and emboss that we had in the cube so that my pyramid is having a 3D feeling to it. If I turn off the bevel and emboss, it's just gonna make my pyramid appear to be pretty flat and it's not the effects that we're trying to get. So after adding a inner glow and a bevel emboss, is adding more dimension to my pyramid, making it a 3D. After we have this set up, we just need to edit the animation in the outside. Essentially, we're only animating the size property. So we have the pyramid grow bigger, 90% on white scale, and then change it to 50%, go back to 120. So there's a anticipation and overshoot that just grows from the bottom together with my grid line. This is gonna be our animation for the pyramid. After we have the animation, let's just add in another curves effect to make it darker. And then we can add a deep glow to make it brighter. So if I don't have the curves effect, everything will be overexposed. So that's why I want to make it darker first before I apply the deep glow. Overall, it's looking pretty good with the deep glow. And in terms of the grid lines, let me just show you. It's 
actually very simple. All I did is just a bunch of lines with some position changes. And that's how we animated the grid line. And I duplicate it one more time to stagger them so that they're animating on at the different time. And that's how we achieve this grid line animation. After we put everything together, this is gonna be my final animation. That's it with this video. Hope you like it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for your next project. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Let me know in the description if this video is helpful and what other videos or tutorials you would like to see on this channel. I would love to hear your feedback. One last thing, don't forget to join our community to hang out with fellow designers, stay on top of the industry trends and grow together. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.